Welcome back. Uh, we're going to talk about basic elements of photography, this time the camera concept and what the heck is a lens. So let's take a look. We know there's some things that we need to uh, have in order to create a photograph. Now, a photograph, well, the word photograph simply means light writing. Photo, light, graph, writing. So really, when we're making a photograph, we're writing with light. We're controlling that light for a purpose. And we need a couple of things to get started with. We need a way to create that image with light. And that's what the lens does. And we need a light tight box where that image can actually be formed and seen. And that's what the camera does. So let's get looking at the camera. Well, the word camera actually means room. And during the Renaissance, lots of artists had a secret. And that secret was that they were using a camera obscura to make the beautifully detailed drawings that would become beautifully detailed paintings. And the artist David Hockney has done wonderful research on this. A camera obscura literally means dark room. Camera, room, obscura, dark. And literally, a camera obscura was a dark room. And here we see an illustration in the day, as they say, of a person inside a dark room. They're holding a canvas. There's a pinhole in one of the walls and light from the exterior is being cast on that canvas. And by golly, there's an upside down and backwards image of that world outside. And the idea of the pinhole as a device that could be used to form an image is something that goes way back to Aristotle, who saw an eclipse of the sun through fig leaves as they overlapped on the ground below him. Today, of course, uh, we generally don't walk around with rooms in order to make our pictures. We walk around with little handheld camera obscuras, but basically the same, the same thing. Uh, they're a little dark room in which an image can be created by the action of light. Maybe some of you when you were children, or maybe some of you now, I mean, there are many adults who enjoy pinhole photography, uh, have made a pinhole photograph. And a pinhole is just a pinhole. Pinhole in a box. And inside that box, if you put some light sensitive material, the light that's passing through that pinhole will be sufficiently formed to create an image. Well, how does it do that? Well, the pinhole is so tiny that only one or two or three or four, maybe a few more, little tiny numbers of rays of light from any one point on your subject can pass through that pinhole. And because only a few light rays from any one point on your subject can pass through that pinhole, what's arrayed on the inside of the box is a fully formed image. We don't need a lens. Now, most of the cameras that you buy are not going to come with a pinhole. They'll come with a lens, and there's a very good reason for that. The pinhole is a very small hole and very little light gets through. It would take a long, long time to make an exposure, even with a high ISO, with a pinhole. It can be done, and actually some people create an adapter for their DSLRs where they can replace the lens with a pinhole. You might want to try that too. But we're going to talk now about the more normal way to create an image, and that is to use a lens. What the lens does is it allows us to use a lot more rays of light from any one point of our subject. They spread apart, there's lots of them, and the lens brings them back together at the focal plane. And we see that in this illustration here. Light rays from the elbow of Rosie the Riveter are being spread apart. They pass through the lens and they're brought together at the focal plane. And it's bringing light rays together again that we call focus. When an image is out of focus, well, what that means is the light rays that have been 
reflected from any point on our subject and spread apart and gone through the lens are brought together someplace other than at the focal plane. We see here that the light rays have come together a good distance before they reach the focal plane and when they get there they're creating a circle rather than a fine point of light. And that circle we call a circle of confusion. So anything that's out of focus in your picture is out of focus simply because the light rays haven't been brought back together again at the focal plane on the sensor. If you've done any research at all on cameras, you've probably noticed that cameras come with either a fixed focal length lens, for example a 50 millimeter, or they might come with a zoom lens, and a zoom lens could be anywhere from 15 to 30, 25 to 75, it's a range. And you might be scratching your head and saying, what the heck is all this about? Well, a focal length is simply a measurement of the distance from the optical center of the lens to the focal plane when the image is focused on infinity. When we're photographing like the moon, something very far away, we focus on that, we focus our lens on infinity, that little sidewards eight symbol that you might see, the distance from the optical center of that lens to the focal plane, that's what we call the focal length. And in this illustration, we're seeing a 50 millimeter lens. So it's 50 millimeters from the point of focus to the optical center of the lens. A shorter lens is a smaller number millimeter focal length. So 28 millimeters. It's less than 50. Okay, it's a shorter lens. Short lens, same principle. It's the distance from the focal plane to the center of the optical center of the lens when that lens is focused at infinity. And you can see here that the 28 millimeter lens is closer to the focal plane than the 50 millimeter lens was. In photography, we have something called normal focal length. And it's a concept that you really need to be aware of. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time with you about this. Normal focal length means that the perspective of the scene is rendered normally. In other words, something that is three feet away looks three feet away perceptively in the photograph, and it's similar to the way your eye would perceive the scene. Knowing the normal focal length lens for your camera is pretty important. Here we see an illustration of how Rosie might appear with a normal focal length lens on the sensor. In this illustration, we see how Rosie appears with a wide angle or a shorter focal length lens. The shorter the focal length of the lens, the smaller your subject is going to appear on the sensor at the focal plane. And the more far apart things are going to look in the scene. And we're going to cover this a lot in a future lecture. But right now, this is an important principle for you to understand. If we switch to a telephoto lens, in other words, a longer lens, well, what happens? Gee, our subject Rosie is cropped off now. We don't even see part of her on the focal plane, on the sensor. And why is that? Well, the telephoto or longer focal length lens makes things appear closer to us, bigger than they would to our eye. And everything is gauged and based on how your eye might perceive space. Well, uh, clearly uh, there are different size lenses. In this hand, I've got a 15 millimeter, fairly wide angle, I'd call it a fisheye lens, on my uh, Canon camera. And over here, I've got a zoom telephoto, 100 to 400, and you can see that that's quite a longer lens than this one is. And uh, with the zoom lens, I can pick any focal length from 100 all the way out to 400. This is a fixed focal length lens. It's 15 millimeters and it's not going to change. The shorter the lens, the wider the angle of view. And with my 15 millimeter, 
I've got a, just about 180 degrees of view, left, right, top, and bottom. That's a big image. As long as I'm using a full frame sensor camera. All of the figures that you see on the screen right now are related to a full frame sensor camera. In other words, a sensor that's about the same size as 35 millimeter negative or slide. 35 millimeter lens, it's a little bit longer than a 15 millimeter. It's going to give me about a 60 degree field of view. 70 millimeter lens will be about 34 degrees and a 200 millimeter lens will be about 12 degrees. Very narrow. We don't see too much left and right. See just a narrow area in front all the way back to our 15 millimeter 180 degrees left and right. So different focal lengths, different angles of view and the effect of that angle of view depends a lot on the size of the sensor. Normal, wow, what does that mean? Uh, it can mean a lot of things, but in terms of photography, what normal means is normal perspective. In other words, the lens that you choose renders the space in front of you as you would normally perceive it. Distances look normal. The focal length that will produce that normal perspective effect depends on the sensor size. For a full frame sensor, which is 36 by 24 millimeters, the normal focal length is 50 millimeters. For an APS-C sensor, the normal focal length is about 30 millimeters. And for a four-thirds sensor, the normal focal length is about 25 millimeters. So you can see there's a big change in the actual focal length of the lens to produce what we call normal perspective. And the reason for that is the difference in sizes of the sensor. Huge important. Here's a photograph of me holding a uh, soccer ball. It's been autographed by a lot of famous photographers using a 50 millimeter lens with a full frame camera. And that full frame focal length for normal is 50 millimeters. When we keep that 50 millimeter lens and put it on a different camera, one that has an APS-C sensor, well, all of a sudden, you don't see the soccer ball, you don't see a lot of other stuff, you don't see my cell phone, because on an APS-C sensor, the 50 millimeter lens acts as a telephoto. There's a multiplier or crop factor that we use for adjusting the effect of the focal length of the lens with the various sensors. And with an APS-C sensor, that happens to be 1.6. So in essence, my 50 millimeter lens has magically turned into an 80 millimeter lens if I was to use it on a 35 millimeter size camera, full frame camera. If we go to an even smaller sensor, the 4 thirds sensor, 21 by 17 millimeters, still using a 50 millimeter lens now, whoa, we're cropping even more. That's because the multiplier effect for that 4 thirds sensor is a factor of two. And so in essence, this is what the picture would look like if I was using my full frame camera now with a 100 millimeter lens. Uh, that means we've got a 50 millimeter lens and if we put it on different cameras, we're going to see it becomes, like magic, a different focal length. 50 millimeter lens on my 35 millimeter size full frame digital camera gives me the big picture. When we take that 50 millimeter lens and put it on an APS-C camera, we see the image that's conveyed in the red box. And then if we take that 50 millimeter lens and put it now on a 4 thirds camera, we'll see the image in the white box. Long and short of it, not to make a pun, but I guess I just did, understanding the relationship between the focal length of the lens and the size of the sensor is a key element in digital photography. Thank you.